So with Windows 11 coming, you know we're gonna see new Surface devices. The Surface Pro 8 is one of them, but even more interesting, at least design-wise, is this new guy, the Surface Laptop Studio. The Surface Pro is what you might call a mature product line. It's been around for a while. They've ironed out most of the kinks. It's reliable, people like it. Now we're up to the Surface Pro 8. And if you looked at it, you'd be hard pressed to really see a difference between this and the Surface Pro 7 until you start to look a little deeper. The first thing that jumped out to me was that this now uses the slimmer Microsoft stylus that came with the Surface Pro X originally, and that's a different variant of the Surface. Well, now that has come to the Surface Pro line, and the nice thing is it fits into a little pocket right at the top of the keyboard cover. It snaps in there magnetically, it charges while it's in there, and then you just close up the, uh, the keyboard cover over the screen and you're good to go. Your stylus is protected. You're not gonna lose it while you're walking around. Now, the downside to all this is that with the new keyboard cover that has room for the slim stylus, that means that your old Surface Pro keyboards are not gonna fit this new model. They move where the connection points are. I feel like almost every generation of Surface somehow makes it so that you have to buy a new keyboard cover along with the Surface Pro itself. Also really interesting about the new stylus implementation is that the Surface Pen gives you a little bit of haptic feedback now. I mostly noticed it when I was selecting different types of brushes in drawing programs, and you get a little, a little tap while you're making your selection. Even though it looks very familiar, the display is actually slightly bigger now. It's gone all the way up to 13 inches, and it is a 28 80 by 1920 display. So a slightly higher res display, a little bit higher than the previous version. More interesting perhaps is this is a 120 hertz capable screen. Now it's not gonna run at 120 all the time to default to 60. Uh, running at 120 is gonna knock out your battery pretty quick, but you have that option to go up to that if you have a need for it. Inside, it's got 11th gen Intel processors. That's pretty much what we'd expect, Core i5 and Core i7. And it's also part of Intel's Evo platform, which is um, a set of basically rules and guidelines for really slim but fairly powerful laptops with good battery life. Now you've got a couple of Thunderbolt 4 ports on here and you can use those for a variety of things. You can connect a bunch of 4K displays through them. You can use them to hook up an external GPU box if you have one of those. You can of course charge through it just like you would charge through a USB-C port although there still is the proprietary surface power connection on the other side with the little sort of magnetically attached thing that never seems to quite fit right or stay in. I do appreciate that the Surface Pro 8 has a full HD camera, which is something most laptops don't have. MacBooks don't have it. Basically, very few laptops do. And since we're all working from home now and doing a lot of video meetings, you want that higher resolution camera using a 720 camera and then using a machine with a 1080 camera, let me tell you, it's a big difference you can tell right away. Much more interesting is the Surface Laptop Studio. This is a new product from Microsoft. It reminds me of both the Surface Laptop, which is a very nice slim laptop they make, and the Surface Studio, which is their big all-in-one desktop that's best known for having a giant screen that pivots down, almost like a drafting table. So as you can imagine, the Surface Laptop Studio combines elements of both of those. It looks like a standard 14-inch laptop, but that screen doesn't detach, but instead it pivots and pulls down over the keyboard, kind of like the display on that Surface Studio desktop. So you can make one stop just over the keyboard, kind of a kiosk mode. There's a couple of magnets that actually snap it into place there, so you're always putting it uh, in exactly the right spot. You know, and that's great for doing a video meeting where you don't want to be distracted by your keyboard or just watching a movie or playing a game and just getting your controller and sitting right in front of the screen. Then you can take the screen and continue to fold it down so it's on top of the keyboard itself and you end up with a thick, chunky tablet, uh, kind of like one of those uh, 360 degree hinge two-in-ones, although the hinge here works in a different way. And it's a little heavy for a tablet you'd carry around, but it also supports that Microsoft Surface Slim Pen 2, the same thing you're going to find in the Surface Pro 8. And here it also has a magnetic little hidey home it sits in. It's right under the front lip, which I think is really clever. And it's actually a fairly strong magnet, so I feel like it's just not going to go flying off, even if it gets bumped around in your bag. The reason they can put it there is because the laptop sort of sits on a little pedestal. Uh, instead of just being one solid piece on the bottom half, it rises up. You got the top keyboard deck, and below that, this almost 
pillar that comes in from the sides, and that's where a lot of the fans are, the fan vents and the cooling vents, uh, because this thing generates a lot of heat, and you have to do some creative, inventive stuff with the cooling. It makes for a design that's a little bit unusual. I'm not really sure if I love it or not yet, but at least it's trying something different to try to dissipate some of this heat, and it gives you a place to take your stylus and just snap it in there. The screen is 14.4 inches, it's 2400 by 1600, and again, it can do uh, 120 hertz refresh rate, uh, which is becoming more and more common now on higher end devices, but again, you gotta watch out for the battery hit from stuff like that. The real secret about the Surface Laptop Studio is that it's basically replacing a different Surface product, and that is the Surface Book. The Surface Book was kind of a very high-end two-in-one. You had your standard Windows tablet screen, and it snapped onto a really thick, chunky keyboard base. And when you snapped it on, in the base, you had not only an extra battery, which would improve your battery life, but you also had a discrete GPU, and you could actually get some fairly high-end NVIDIA graphics cards in there. So it was actually a good system for gaming and graphic design and photo and video work. And then when you didn't need that extra power, you could just pop the screen off and just use it as a standard uh, Windows tablet. So what they're doing in this case is they're taking that concept, they're taking the two parts, the, the screen and the keyboard, and they're permanently attaching them. So it doesn't detach anymore. Instead, it has this center hinge where it folds down over the screen. It is a different look, a different feel, a different vibe. Here in the Surface Laptop Studio, Everything is always together. You always have the graphics card. It's different graphics now. You can get an NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti, which is okay. Uh, there's also going to be a professional version that has some AMD graphics in it. I always like seeing laptops with new and inventive designs. Everyone just does the clamshell, or if they do a hybrid of some kind, it's just the uh, either pull-apart kind or the 360 kind. Those are the designs that have lasted over the years when other experiments have kind of gone by the wayside. But we have seen designs like this one before. I think some of them even date back as far as the launch of Windows 8, where everybody was trying to figure out what the perfect Windows tablet laptop hybrid would look like. And I really like a lot of those inventive designs, even though a lot of them were not really all that practical. Uh, we've seen this kind of lift up the uh, screen T-shape uh, hinge on a bunch of systems. It's never really become mainstream, but now that Microsoft is adopting it, maybe we'll see even more people try it. Uh, I don't know if it's what I'd use all day, every day, all the time, but I like that kiosk mode. And that's often my favorite part of a hybrid, where you just get to deal with the screen, uh, the touch screen, and you don't have to worry about the keyboard or touchpad or anything else. So all of these new systems, including uh, some minor updates to the Microsoft Surface Pro X and the Surface Go 3, in addition to these guys, they're all gonna come with Windows 11 on them, making them some of the very first systems with that new OS, which is going to be hitting October 5th. 